I first met him at Mrs. Indira Gandhi's home. And I meet this young man who was just about my age, uh, bright, good looking, well dressed, uh, beaming with a lot of enthusiasm. And he took a lot of interest in what I had to say. Oh my God, so many things, many, many. One, Rajiv Gandhi was young, had a dream, was charismatic. He was very good with people. He had right body language, eye contact. He was warm. Uh, in our relationship for almost a decade, I don't think there was any conflict at all. He believed in the inclusive, diverse India. He believed in opportunities for young. He believed in young talent. He believed in equality. He believed in lifting poor people at the bottom of the economic pyramid up through technology interventions. And he was also a little bit tacky. So that was interesting. He'll take a screwdriver and fix it, something. I remember once I went to his house and uh, he was on his stool standing up there and changing the bulb. He's the Prime Minister of India. And he says, Sam, give me that screwdriver. Okay. And I said, why are you changing it? But he said that the bulb is flicking. So rather than asking some electrician to come and fix it, he decided to go get up and do it himself. You know, that's the kind of person he was. CDOT stands for Center for Development of Telematics, which is the science of telephone and IT. And our idea was to go beyond telephone and design telephone system based on microprocessors and new software. One was telecom IT and everything we have today has roots in Rajiv Gandhi era. Two technology missions, first on literacy, then we had literacy below 30%. Now it is almost 80%. Immunization. We had the largest number of polio patients in the world. And we were not making polio vaccines. So we went to Rajiv Gandhi. And he said, let's produce polio vaccine. We eradicated polio. We used to import billion dollar worth of edible oil. So we had a mission on oil seeds. And we started reducing that import substantially and became highly productive country on the oil seed front. Drinking water, milk was another mission. We are the largest producer of milk today in the world. Digital India seeds were planted in Rajiv Gandhi's time with formation of NIC, building indigenous talent in telecom, IT, software, microprocessor, then leading to starting companies like TCS, Infosys, Wipro and many others. But during Manmohan Singh's time, lot of new things got done. One, we decided to connect 250,000 panchayats to optical fiber. That was our idea. Then we decided simultaneously to build national knowledge network to connect 1100 nodes with optical fiber cable to connect all our universities, all our libraries and all our R&D institutions. That network called National Knowledge Network today is the real foundation for Digital India. You had UID, what Nandan and his group started and then we had program, for example, I was in charge of a program by government on uh, mobile payment and today you talk about the payment and all. Nobody knows that we started that work. I tell people that look at me as an example of Indian. I come from a very poor family, born and raised in tribal little village in Orissa. My father had fourth grade education and I could go get a master's in physics for no more than $10 total tuition. Which country will give you that? That's what Congress did. 
for me. Congress got us in independence. So my father felt that he was now free to do whatever he wanted to do. He would have never thought of sending his children to colleges if it was under British Raj. That's what Congress did. Congress built all the institutions, IITs, IIMs, you know, research laboratories, CSIR, space research, you know, atomic energy, you name it. The biggest contribution is democracy. That is the beauty of India. You look at all of the things that we all benefit today. These things were planted during Congress time. Congress provided that vision, that opening, infrastructure, encouragement. You can't say that nothing got done because it's an insult, not only to one political party, but to the talent of this country. You have to take pride collectively in what got done. It was 10 o'clock at night or 10.30. I got a call from my biographer, Mayank Chaya, saying, do you know that Rajiv Gandhi got killed? And I was shocked. I didn't know what to do. I literally lost my heart. It was tough. We all miss him. Even today, a nation misses him. Today, India would have been very different if Rajiv Gandhi had been given 10 more years. You would have been excited about the internet, web, AI, big data, analytics, artificial intelligence, open source software. He would have loved a lot of this stuff. I mean, he would have been thrilled with the smartphone. I think Rahul is a much deeper thinker, if you ask me. Okay. Rahul is more analytical. Rahul is more uh, sort of uh, focused on going more and more into details, you know. And it's a matter of style. So I had a little hardware that we wanted to show him. And uh, I called him and I said, can we come to your office and show you something? He said, yeah. Because we set it up outside his office, security and all that stuff. And I took some of the young people with me, you know, because they also need to see him, meet him, because then only I can charge them up. So he comes and shakes hands with everybody and they're explaining this and that and everybody's saying their own thing. And because everybody wants his attention and all that. So you let it happen. So one guy, a very interesting young guy, he says, I'm not washing my hand for 30 days. I said, why? He said, do you realize I shook hands with Prime Minister? He said, this hand, I'm going to wrap it up in a glove for 30 days. I mean, that was romantic. Okay. That's how he excited people. Okay. It doesn't mean much, but it means a lot.